PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete here to annoy you again. How are you all going today? Hey, I'm mucking around in the workshop and the old compressor here, it's like me, it's getting old. I think it needs a walking stick and it just can't pump up for the pressure that it used to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back it down to about 50 pounds and see if I can get the old wheel to last for another couple of years. Because at the moment I've got the pressure running probably about 60, 70 pounds and it's just too much. I think the capacitators on the old motor are starting to go, it's just really hard for it to start and it's starting to make little knocking noises as well. So I just thought I'd do a video while I'm doing this guys and I'll show you fellas how to adjust the uh, pressure settings on your compressor. Anyway guys, same as usual, like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day in the comments below, we can have a bit of a yarn and uh, yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Anyway guys, like I say, my old girl here, she's a bit um, knackered like me. <laughs> And what I want to do is just turn the pressure down. I think I've got it set to about 60, 70 pound there. But I'll start it up and you can listen to it for half a second and you see how noisy it is and I have to do something otherwise things are just going to crap out. Anyway, let's get some pressure into it. See that guys, the old girl only gets up to about 60, 65 maybe PSI. When I first got it, I could run it at about 100 and I ran it flat out as well, which is not good for the old things because they just chug and they bang and they crash like this thing thing. So what we'll do guys is take this cover off and I'll just see if I can back it down a little bit so we don't burn the old girl out. <laughs> and this will be the same for most compressors guys, uh, especially these workshop compressors here. This is a three horsepower compressor, it's about the biggest I can run on my power supply in my garage. But um, yeah, it works the same. I've actually got another compressor I can show you the difference between this one and the other one. But they're all much of a muchness thing. So most of them guys are going to have a, like a Phillips screw in the top here. So if we just undo the Phillips screw and then we can take the cover off. I don't suggest you do this either guys because they're all factory set. And there's a reason why they're factory set. So they don't want you to blow yourself up. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you know how it is. But I wouldn't advise you do it. So if you notice here guys on top of this thing we've got a bit of a, like a bolt thing. Some of them have a bolt that you screw in and out. Some of them have like a thread with a nut that you can just screw in and out. But uh, they're all much of a muchness. And then some of them also have on the other side, they may have on this side here, or the other side here, they may have another screw thing that looks like this. And if you've got one like that, that is the balance screw. That balances it between when it starts and when it stops. And the screw on the top here controls how far it goes before it stops, if you know what I mean. So the screw on the top here is the maximum PSI before it's going to shut off. And then if you've got a screw down the bottom here, that's the balance. So let's say for argument, say you screw this to get it to stop at 100 PSI. And then you can adjust the bottom one for it to come back on at 50 PSI. That's, that's the balancing act. But this model here seems to have it all in one. Like I think it's about 30 pound difference between on and off. So if I set this to 100, then it'll click back on at 70 or 60, just depending what the balance is set at. And the screw and nut bolt or whatever you've got here, with the, like I say, whether you've got it sticking out or whatever, it's all much of a muchness. It controls the spring in here. Can you see there's a spring in here, guys? And that controls the pressure of the spring. So the more I tighten this down, the more it pulls the spring up, the less tension it puts on the spring. The less tension it has on the spring, the less it's going to load up to before it stops. So in other words, guys, when I screw this down, we're going to increase the pressure before it shuts off. And when I wind it the other way, anti-clockwise, then it's going to decrease the pressure before it shuts off. That's as clear as mud, Pete. <laughs> so guys, as you can see, we're about 60 PSI. So what you need to do is unplug it or take it out of the mains or turn the circuit breaker off. Make sure you don't have any electrical current going to here, otherwise you're going to go zap yourself. And that's probably not a good look. So what we need to do is, like I say, unplug it, make sure we've got no electrical current. And then we need to take some pressure off this. So what I'll do guys is take a lot more pressure off this because I want to see if I can get it to stop as close to 50 PSI as I can. That way it's not too much strain when it goes to start up again. And I don't really use much more than 50 PSI anyway. Anyway, we'll give that a kick in the guts and try that. Nobody knows! <laughs> what did we end up with, guys? 
about 50 psi, let's have a look. See that guys, just a bit over 50 psi, that'll do me, because <laughs> we were originally up around here somewhere, so down to so down to 50 is all good. I uh, might make the compressor last a little bit longer anyway. I also think this pressure switch is getting dicky because it doesn't, it doesn't respond like it should do either. Anyway guys, I'll show you another pressure switch on a smaller compressor, but they're basically the same, but I don't know which sort of compressor you fellas have got. So guys, here we have this sort of compressor. It's a lot smaller, and it's also pumping up to about 100 psi. It takes a lot longer to fill the tank because it's got a little pump on it. But I'll show you how you to adjust the pressure on this one. What I'll do, guys, is I'll just show you something first, eh? Don't say Pete never shows you nothing. Now, you see where well, this is all factory set, guys? Now, there's a big reason why the manufacturers don't want you playing with this. Not only the fact that you might blow yourself to kingdom come, but you'll burn out the compressor a whole lot quicker than what it's supposed to. That's basically what I did with my other big one. I just ran everything up to the maximum and you shouldn't really do that. So let's have a look what they're saying about this. Warning. Pressure control set at factory. Do not adjust factory settings. Aha! So there you go. But Pete's going to do it anyway. <laughs> I advise you not to do it, but you know how it is. I just want to show you how to do it. In case one day you run into someone and they say, do you know how to do this? And I say, yeah, but I've never done it before, but I know how to do it. Hey? <laughs> Right, that's once again, guys, same drama. There's a little screw on the top here, just undo that. Make sure you've unplugged it first, like I said. But honestly, I wouldn't really go tampering with this because it'll, um, could blow up and do all sorts of nasty things to you. But anyway, this one here has got a nice Phillips screw head on the top of it. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you guys. See that guys, we've got a Phillips screw head here. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but it even tells you on this. Going this way, it increases the pressure. Going anti-clockwise, decreases the pressure. So we're running at about 90, 100 PSI, so let's decrease it and see if it actually works. Eh? Once again guys, this doesn't have a separate balancing one. Sometimes, like I said to you before, you either get it this side or you'll get it the other side, where it just balances it up. So, at the moment we're about 90 psi where it stops. Right, so let's decrease the uh, pressure, see what happens. As you can see, that spring is getting less tension on it. Right, I might have gone a bit too far. Don't get too carried away, Pete. Right, yeah, we'll go about there. You can see how far I've moved that up. Righty-o, let's plug them back in again. Drain some air out of it, see what happens. Oh, right, get rid of some air, guys. Under 90, I think we were just over this side of 90. Now we're about what are we 85, maybe even 70 here. We could probably drop it down some more if you want to have another go. Why not? Give it a crack, Nigel. Let's take some more pressure off there. Make sure you unplug it first. See, that feels quite slack now. So we'll try that. It might be the lowest setting we can go. Once again, we'll bleed off some here. Yeah, guys, where are we? We're still a bit lower again. As it's settling down now, you can see it's dropping. Dropping, dropping, dropping. Settling down about 70 there. So there you go, see it does work. 
So guys, that's about that for the day. Like I say, I wouldn't muck around with it, but uh, I've done it over the years. You just want to get that extra little bit out of your compressor. But that's why they put these labels and stuff on the shit to, to make your warranty. Because if you muck around with it, your warranty will be void and it'll wear your machine out quicker than what it's supposed to. But anyway, guys, that's up to you. My advice is don't play with the pressure switches because it's really, really dangerous. Anyway, guys, same as usual. Like the video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day in the comments below. And we'll see you next time, mate. Bye. Pete's tools.com.com.com.